In this video, we'll be going over some of the worst equip cards in the game. And at number 10, we have Koitsu. This is a union monster who has the effect that while it's on the field, you can equip it to an Aitsu monster that you control in order to increase the attack of that monster by 3000 and give it piercing damage. Now a 3000 attack boost in piercing damage is pretty great, if there's something more to it than that. Instead, what you have are two incredibly low attack, high level monsters that are going to require you to use a whole bunch of other cards to get them out, and when you finally do, you just get an attack boost with piercing damage. And at that point, you're better off just playing Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon, who does what these two cards are trying to do, but 10 times better, and almost never sees competitive play. Because it turns out, big beaters with piercing damage aren't super good. Especially when they have no other kind of protection, and it's really hard to bring out the cards associated to that combo. You can cheese this a little bit with Union Carrier, but it won't actually gain the effect. And it would still require you to get out Aitsu, which is a level 5 normal monster with almost no stats. Now, this isn't all doom and gloom. They are incredibly high level monsters with low attack and defense. So there's lots of support cards that work on them, which normally don't work on high level monsters. So if you're playing gimmick decks that really need level 10 or 5 monsters, there's probably a way to use these two cards. But honestly, they were kind of made as jokes, I assume. So of course Koitsu would take a spot on this list. And at number 9, we have Evil Blast. This is a trap card, which can only be equipped to one of your opponent's monsters after they special summon a monster. And then, this card has the effect to increase the attack of your opponent's monster by 500. But, during each of your opponent's standby phases, they take 500 points of damage. Now, 500 burn damage every turn is pretty good in stall burn decks in Duel Links, but even in that game, Evil Blast is too cumbersome to use for that effect and they don't even bother with it because it can only be activated when your opponent special summons a monster. So it's not like you can activate this card and use it immediately in order to inflict 500 burn damage to your opponent as soon as your opponent's turn starts. You have to wait for them to special summon a card, and then hope they don't link it away or something. Plus, it gives that monster an attack boost, which is only really useful if you're playing cards that specifically want your opponent's attack to be changed, like Smile Potion or Ragna Zero. That is to say, not very useful in too many situations. Kind of a bad card, where even in Duel Links where it might be useful, they don't even use it. And at number 8, we have Insector Ant. This card has the effect, while it's on the field, you can equip an Insector monster from your hand or graveyard to this card, which is an effect all the Insector monsters have. And its other effect is, while this card is equipped to a monster, that monster's levels increase by 3 and it also gains that monster's attack and defense. And if the equipped monster would be destroyed, you can destroy the equipped card instead. Now, this card has 200 attack and defense, which means you're not gaining much of a boost. And increasing your card's level by 3 is kind of irrelevant, because an Insector monster is going to have to use their one equip per turn in order to put this card on them. And all they gain out of that is 200 attack and a level boost. Now, what makes this card particularly bad is that there are so many good Insector monsters to use instead. Like, let's take a look at Insector Ladybug, for example. This card is miles better than Insector Ant, as it has the exact same effect, where it gives them the attack of this card as well as increasing the level that monster is equipped to. But it also has another effect while it's an equipped card, where it can send itself to the graveyard in order to increase the level of its equipped monster by two. And Insector monsters love to have their equip cards on themselves being sent to the graveyard, because it allows you to activate the effects of Insector Dragonfly and Insector Centipede. Both of those cards have effects that activate when a card equipped to them is sent to the graveyard, where they can either search out an Insector card, or special summon an Insector card from the deck, and neither of these effects are once per turn. So they love cards like Ladybug that can send themselves to the graveyard in order to proc these search effects. And there's even cards like Insector Hornet and Insector Hopper, who similarly have effects that send themselves to the graveyard in order to gain effects. Insector Hornet can destroy a card when it sends itself to the graveyard, so it's the best Insector monster to equip to stuff. And Insector Hopper can allow the monster to attack directly. And Insector Ant does none of these things, and only provides an incredibly mediocre attack boost. It's kind of funny comparing cards like Insector Ant to Insector Hornet, where one of them is so laughably bad it's almost never used in Insector decks, and the other one is so amazingly good that it was limited on the ban list for years. Although, to be fair, 
Insector Firefly is pretty bad too, so it's not like Insector Ant is the lone terrible Insector card, but it's still bad enough in its archetype to make this list. And at number 7, we have Armed Changer. This is an equip spell card, which can only be equipped to a monster by sending an equip spell card from your hand to the graveyard. And when it's equipped to a monster, if that equipped monster destroys a monster by battle, you get to add a monster with an attack equal to or less than the equipped monsters from your graveyard to your hand. Now, adding cards from your graveyard back to your hand is a good effect, but this card is heavily limiting you on which cards you can actually add back. And technically, adding cards from your graveyard to your hand is considered going plus. So in order for this card to pay for itself, you would need to attack over two monsters in order to activate its effect twice. After which, it would then start going pure plus off of its effect. Although in normal Yu-Gi-Oh, equip cards generally don't see play because of how easy it is to destroy them. If you simply get rid of the monster it's equipped to, that card goes to waste, and pretty much all good decks have a way to destroy monsters. And if you equip it to an indestructible monster, if that card is simply flipped face down, this card gets destroyed. It's also vulnerable to all spell and trap card removal as well, and it's definitely worth a target since it requires you to discard in order to equip. So basically all forms of removal work against equip cards, and that's why the only ones that generally see play are ones that allow you to gain immediate advantage off of them, which generally just involve equip cards that special summon monsters. And having such a steep cost for activating this card just makes it even more terrible. However, if you're able to ignore the card's discard costs and equip this card to a monster directly from your deck with something like Armory Call, then it's an okay card. You can use it to like add back hand traps or something if you manage to destroy something by battle, especially since you can just use Armory Call when you're about to attack something. You can even equip it to one of your opponent's monsters in order to get cards back every time your opponent destroys one of yours, though it's very easy in modern Yu-Gi-Oh for them to just get rid of their monster for Link Plays or something. That's not super recommended either, but since it's not half bad if you can ignore its cost, it gets a slightly lower spot on this list. And at number 6, we have Germ Infection. This card has an effect that while you equip it to a non-machine type monster, that monster will start to lose 300 attack during each of its standby phases. Now a little history about this card, well personal history for me anyway, this was one of the first cards I ever owned, and I used to think it was amazing. A card that continuously reduces the attack of a monster each turn? That's crazy! And when I actually use the cards in decks, it never really performed super good. Because you see, this card doesn't actually do anything until your next turn. It won't actually start decreasing the attack of the monster until the start of your next standby phase and a 300 attack reduction is not very much. So the intended use of this card would be to play it in stall decks and slowly whittle away at the attack of one of your opponent's strong monsters. But it doesn't actually prevent that monster from attacking or anything, and you'd be much better off with really anything else. This card also has been power crept by Shattered Axe, which can be equipped to any monster and reduces the attack of that monster by 500 instead of 300 during each of your standby phases. And Shattered Axe is not very good either. And it's kind of funny that German Faction doesn't work on machine type monsters for lore reasons, because you know, can't really give a machine an infection. Although I'd argue can't really give pyro type monsters an infection either, or rock type monsters, but whatever. A lot of old school Yu-Gi-Oh cards had lore related effects that restricted them to not work on machine types, which is pretty funny. And at number five, we have Brutal Potion. This is a trap card that becomes an equip card to a monster you control and doesn't do anything on its own. This card has the potential to increase the attack of the equipped monster by 1000 until the end phase, but only if you're able to inflict effect damage to your opponent. If you're not able to inflict effect damage during the turn, then this card doesn't do anything. And if you do manage to do that, all you get is a 1000 attack boost until the end phase. And it's not like you can keep inflicting effect damage to increase the attack of the monster by a whole bunch for one turn, as its attack boost is once per turn and you can only ever increase the attack of the equipped monster by 1,000 per turn. And 1,000 attack is not even worth it. There's cards like Axe of Despair which increase the attack of a monster by 1,000 at all times for no cost, and that card's not even good. Now, I can imagine some intended use for this card, like your opponent is attacking into one of your monsters who has this card equipped, and then you activate some trap card which inflicts burn damage to your opponent in order to increase the attack of your monster by 1,000 in order to maybe destroy your opponent's monster by that battle. Now this card is still not very good even if used in that circumstance, 
because you could use something like Blazing Mirror Force instead, which would inflict a whole bunch of effect damage and destroy all of your opponent's monsters. And there's also the fact that even if you were using a decent deck that had a whole bunch of effect damage, you still wouldn't want to use this card because decks that focus on doing effect damage don't attack over things by battle. Generally, their monsters are there to just inflict effect damage as well, or draw more cards, or be stall options. There's very few archetypes which actually try to attack things and also inflict effect damage. There is one really good archetype which does exactly that, the Trickstar archetype, but even they wouldn't use this card because it's not good enough for them. And at number 4, we have Demotion. This card has the very outdated effect where it downgrades the monster equipped with this card by two levels. You can tell this is an old card by its wording, and surprisingly, reducing the level of one monster by two isn't super good. It's not useless though. There are ways to use this card to your advantage. Like if you're playing against an opponent who goes into lots of Xyz monsters, messing with their levels can make it so they can't use that card for Xyz plays. You can also equip it to a normal monster who has the Amulet of Ambition card in order to make their level as low as possible. That way you can gain as much attack as possible due to the effect of Amulet of Ambition, which increases the attack of your monster by 500 times the difference in its level to your opponents. So if you are able to decrease the level of one of your monsters to 1 with this effect, and then you attacked into a monster who was level 7, that would be a 3000 attack boost. Still not super useful for that. It could also be used into one of your level 4 normal monsters to reduce its level to 2. That way it could be a target for the League of Uniform Nomenclature, which would net you a plus 1 in card advantage, which is not half bad. It could also be used to decrease the level of one of your monsters to 2 so that a Junk Warrior could gain a whole bunch of attack when it hits the field, or so that you could attack under the effect of Gravity Bind. There's lots of really mediocre ways to take advantage of this effect, and you may be surprised to hear that this card was never used in a topping competitive deck. But there's so many gimmicky ways to have fun with this card that you can't really hate it too much. And at number 3, we have Assault Spirits. This card manages to do something I didn't think was possible, and be an actual worse version of Brutal Potion. You see, this card also becomes an equip card after you activate it, and then doesn't do anything. Not until you attack something anyway, at which point you can send one monster that has 1000 or less attack from your hand to the graveyard during the damage step, to have your monster gain attack equal to the sent monster until the end phase. So with Brutal Potion, you gain 1000 attack if you were able to inflict effect damage that turn. But with Assault Spirits, you can only gain a maximum of 1000 attack if you're able to discard a monster who has exactly 1000 attack as you only gain attack equal to the monster you sent to the graveyard to activate the effect. And sending monsters to the graveyard to activate this effect is not at all worth it, and for some reason it's restricted to low attack monsters. Having to discard a card from your hand is one of the steepest costs in the game, because of how important card advantage is in Yu-Gi-Oh! So having to discard a card to activate an effect means it better be a good one, and this effect is almost laughably bad because not only does it require you to discard a monster for a temporary, low attack boost, it's restricted in what it allows you to discard. You can't even discard a high attack monster in order to gain 1000 attack. It only works on monsters with less than 1000 attack. There is almost no situation in which you'd want to use this card, which is why it easily takes a high spot on this list, only being out marginally by the top two spots. And at number two, we have Omega Goggles. When this card is equipped to a monster you control, you gain the effect where once per turn you can look at one random card in your opponent's hand. But the monster you equip this to cannot attack during the turn you activate this effect. And yes, this card can only be activated on your own monsters, so you can't even prevent your opponent's monsters from attacking to use this effect. Now there's this spell card which came out in the first set of the game called Inexperienced Spy, which basically has the same exact effect, and never saw play because it's an almost useless effect that only loses you advantage. Omega Goggles really lives up to the legacy of the inexperienced spy, where it allows you to look at one random card in your opponent's hand, and then will also lock that monster from attacking that turn. Now I assume the intended use of this card is to just equip it to something that's not going to attack anyway, like Marshmallow, and then just look at one random card in your opponent's hand every turn because gaining information on your opponent's hand is valuable in Yu-Gi-Oh! But then you run into the problem that most equip cards have, where it's vulnerable to two forms of destruction. If your monster is destroyed, this card goes away. And if you only used it once, you basically just activated a worse version of Inexperienced Spy. And if you're stalling out long enough, 
you probably don't care what cards in your opponent's hand. Wanting information on your opponent's hand is more of a thing good decks want to do. So it's just an incredibly minor positive effect, which has downsides associated to it that aren't really worth the downsides of both losing a card that could have been useful in your hand for something else, and also stopping a monster from attacking, which is why Omega Goggles easily takes a high spot on this list, with the number one spot just being a little bit more useless. And at number one, we have Magical Labyrinth. This is an equipped spell card which can only be equipped to Labyrinth Wall, and then it has the effect to tribute the equipped monster in order to special summon Wall Shadow from your deck. Wall Shadow is an effect monster whose only effect is detailing how it can be special summoned, with the effect of Magical Labyrinth. And the only advantage Wall Shadow has over the card needed to bring it out is that it has 1600 attack instead of zero, while having the exact same defense. Now, having 1600 attack on a monster with high defense is kind of useless, unless you have a way to make use of that attack in some way, like how Total Defense Shogun can attack while in defense position, but uses its attack value for damage calculation. If Wall Shadow did that, then it might actually be an upgrade over Labyrinth Wall. But it doesn't. It doesn't have a useful effect. It just has restrictions on how it can be brought out. And 1600 attack is not worth tributing a level 5 monster with a specific equip spell card. And if all you wanted is 3000 defense, then you already have that with Labyrinth Wall. So there's no reason to bring out Wall Shadow. And since Wall Shadow is so useless, its equip spell card has to be on this list for the same reason. Alright, and that's the list. If you think I missed any other equipped cards which have even worse effects, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, as well as ideas for future videos just like this one. And also, did you know, only 31.2% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel?